Welcome back to another chapter in this teardown of the top end of the shovel head on this FXS Lowrider Harley Davidson. If you haven't been following along, uh, click up here uh, to see the first video in the series and, and catch up. Uh, today we're going to be digging in deeper yet again. Uh, we have a couple of parallel projects going on. Today we're going to be removing the jug here on the front cylinder. As such, I'm going to be loosening these base bolts here, always remembering the location of this bolt here when I put it back in. Because once I lock this down, of course, I'm not going to be able to put this bolt in. It's very important. To loosen these, I'm just going to use uh, 9 16 What I'm going to do is I'm going to go uh, in a cross pattern and slowly relieve tension on each one of these nuts. I'm not going to do one at a time, just a little twist. I'm going to go around to the opposite side here, a little twist, uh, cross pattern here. Then once there's no longer any tension, it's not important, then I could just remove them and, and store the nuts and these uh, triangular shaped uh, washers here that, that uh, allow for the pressure to be evenly dispersed onto the cylinders here. Now for the second round of loosening. Now the roll loosened enough to simply remove. This bolt here is turning with the stud. I'm gonna to need to heat it in order to loosen the Loctite that's on there to take it off. I'm gonna use propane to do that. Only as much heat as I need to get the job done. I'm not trying to cut the thing. And there it goes. Don't forget to collect and store everything for each cylinder in a separate bag. I'm going to be using the rear cylinder removal uh, to illustrate uh, best practices for the removal of the jug from the piston. I want to make sure there's no debris around the perimeter of the bottom of the base where the base gaskets are. I also want to have the piston up high enough but low enough that when I pull this cylinder off, the physical cylinder itself will clear the frame. It's easier to see with the front one removed. It was just too difficult to get on camera. I've removed all of the studs. And I'll point out again that we got that bolt right here. It's still in there. As I lift it up um, just a little, right? Raise it just a little, should be enough to get that bolt out, right? So first thing, uncomplicate matters. And if I get it high enough, just bring it up a little, should be enough to get a towel under there. And what that towel does is it stops getting not only contaminants in there, but if a ring had already broken, I don't want the ring to go and fall into the case there because that would be pretty bad, right? And now I'm just gonna raise this off. I 
and we're off. Ah, we have some, we have some piston slap here. Got some wear on the front and back of the piston here. It's important that I look at this piston on the back before I mess with it, touch it. This is exactly as I left it, as I had removed the cylinder from the piston. And I want to show you something that I found immediately. Now this was not like this when I assembled it. But if we look here, the opening for the rings are lined up with each other. Obviously this is something that, that you would never ever do. When I put this bike together, the three rings were um, uh, out of phase with each other as prescribed in the manual how many degrees offset the three would be from each other. And now you can see that these two are in fact perfectly lined up, zero degrees. Wow, that is something, right? I wanna see where the oil one is. I can move them now, now that I've, now that I've annotated that. So you can see one oil one is down here, right? That was not far off from that, right? So it was over here. And the other oil one, I could see back here, right? So one oil one was back here, another oil one was right here. So all of these were lined up. That's terrible. How on earth did that happen? I would like to know. I'm curious to see what the other cylinder would have with regard to that. But uh, that's not what's really bothering me. I would like to know what the, what the wear is on these, on these rings. I wanna know what we got on this wrist pin as far as play. Any up and down. Any torsional play. I might feel a little torsional. I feel a little back and forth rock. Maybe. Might be a little back and forth rock there. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if that would cause a slap though. That would have to be, it very well could if there's play in that. Right, it's not, it's not gouging slap. It's, it's very minor slap, you can't even hear it. So I wonder if that would do it, like wrist pin. And have to be, I, I don't know what this one is yet. I'd have to take a look at that one to see if there's, there's any gouging on that one too, if there's any slap. The other thing of course is uh, the crank itself, like like is, is, the, is the rod loose. Obviously I got paper towel stuffed in here, but I don't feel any, any Yeah, I'm going to have to take some measurements. I'm going to start by washing the piston. I'm going to use warm water, not hot water. I don't want to, I don't want to flash rust it. I'm going to use uh, soap and then I'm going to spray it with a, a protective oil so it doesn't rust. I'm going to do that now. Inside and out. I just want the whole thing clean. I don't want any contaminants. And we'll have a look. Also spraying through that oil drain, I could see water pouring through, that there's no blockage. It's a rare occasion I get to do this. And already I, I could see where there's some wear on the front and back of the cylinder walls. And from an immediate inspection in the sink here, it doesn't look terrible. I don't see any gouging. And just some wearing. Maybe it can be honed out. I don't know yet. It's gonna need to be measured. We'll have to take a look. I hit this with the compressor, blow it out with air to get all the water out of this. So I want to get oil inside the cylinder immediately. That's all I wanted to do. So I'm drying it out with the paper towel first. There we go, I've applied oil inside the cylinder here. Just gonna distribute that. So that no rust forms, no flash rusting forms in here.
I'll hit it with a paper towel one more time and I'll reapply oil to all of the exposed uh, cast iron surfaces, top, inside, and bottom. I didn't even realize the base gasket is still stuck on here. I'm gonna have to remove the base gasket and clean this up. Base gaskets came off without too much of a fight. I'll clean this up and this will now be ready for inspection. There's a residue that's left on the surface here by the old head gasket material. Comes off really easy though with a, with a razor blade, like no problem at all. It does however leave this silhouette as you can see here after I've cleaned and oiled this area, but it, it's perfectly flat. It's just sort of you can see it in the light and there is no no dip. It's no rust. It's, it's just weird how it, how it leaves that impression in the metal. So I'm just going along with a, with a brand new razor blade and you can see that this comes right up. It just sort of discolors the metal there, but there's no damage whatsoever. So I'm, I'm fine with this. I'm just going to go around until this entire mating surface here is cleaned up. We can see here it's it's almost like a like a little plastic film that's lifting up. It might be mixed with a little bit of surface rust too, like extremely extremely minor surface rust. And if so, the, it's it's done enough just to to leave this marking in the metal, but hasn't damaged the metal in any way. Well, this up now. And there we go. I'm still gonna have to deal with this though. But one thing at a time. Everybody says that these are the best keepers to use, but pray to God you never have to remove them. They're terrible. These are the ones that are like a, um, the, the spring thing you put your keys on, like a keychain. As long as you understand the fact that they're not reusable, you can remove them. It's not fun. I don't like them. You have to get a start on them. Once you get a start on them, as you can see, that's what they look like. It didn't drip down nearly as easy as I thought it would. It, it did come out though. I mean, this this bad boy is really in here. Really in here. Definitely no play, that's for sure. However, There is play in the bushing. There is play in the bushing. I know you can't see it on the video, and, and the hand does exaggerate um, what it is. I mean, clearly it's not rocking as much as my hand is. I'm really gonna have to pull this pin out in order to emphasize this. There, there, there is slop in this bushing here. Also, I, got, I gotta say, um, I'm looking at this, the wear on these pistons is so mild that I could still feel the original machine work and see the original machine work on here. Whatever happened here did not happen long or, or the significance of it was minor. This side's a little worse, but I could still feel the machining. Like you could see that there's like, like grooves. You could hear it. I'll, I'll bring it up to the camera. That, listen. It's still there. So it's not like chewed up to no end. It's just wearing. It's like starting to wear. This may be salvageable. I don't know yet. A quick test here of the of the pin and make sure this, this isn't loose. Um, I've already checked this, but I'm gonna demonstrate. I'm gonna grab this as such. I'll pull to now this this moves back and forth, right? So I'm gonna pick a side, I'm gonna pull it further from me and up, and I'm pulling up against it, and I'm gonna give it a tap with the hammer, and I'm gonna listen to here if I hear a metal sound, like a clanking. And I do not, I'll pull to the other side and do it. And I don't, and this, this feels good, this feels okay, I don't feel any, any up or down motion, right? This doesn't feel loose. The, obviously, like I said, there's a back and forth, but there's no up or down that I could feel. And I didn't hear any noise, but I'll show you what I did find, All right, There is a smoking gun here. This here is not looking so hot. We could see this is the uh, bushing for the uh, wrist pin. And number one, you can immediately see that it's, it's completely out of round. You don't even need calipers to see this. Look how much meat is on top. Now look how much meat is on the bottom. See that? 
So it is, it is about half the thickness on the bottom as it is on top. Look at the amount of wear. Let me push some of the oil away. Look how much wear is inside here. This is all completely rubbed away. And no doubt that would explain what we saw before when I put the, the piston in uh, sideways and I was able to wiggle it up and down. A lot of room there. That, that give, although I did it up and down, could actually uh, translate to a, a wiggle that way. That could be our, our piston slap right there. That was a lot of play. And this looks absolutely terrible. Absolutely terrible indeed. Uh, this is something that would need to be addressed. This could be the smoking gun for this piston. Came off the tripod for a moment to take a look into the cylinder, have a look at the cylinder wall, and we could see the 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 wear in here, and it's extremely mild. I'm gonna try and move it so we can see the silhouette. It's extremely mild. And you can see in the middle of it is is some of the original cross hatching still there. And I wonder if it could simply be honed out. Like I really caught this right at the beginning of what was going on. I'm getting as close as I can here. You could still see within it the cross hatching itself. And I'm gonna turn this around so we can see the other side. And here's the other side. Even within the the middle of it, we could see the original texture almost almost closes up completely. So this is probably something that I could just have rehoned and I dodged a bullet and call it a day. As we turn out my tripod wet and broke and I'm gonna have to go and fix this and prepare to clean up the piston and I'm gonna cut this movie right here and then I'm gonna make a second part. So when the second part comes out, just click right up here to move to the second part of this video. For those who've stuck around, I hope you enjoyed this. There'll be more videos coming out for this series. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. <laughs> Would you like to reply?